Hello everyone, my name is this comic maker and today we're doing another graphic novel review, except this time it's gonna be kind of a double feature. We'll be taking a look at beautiful comic Nimona by N.D. Stevenson, but this time we'll also be taking a look at the movie adaptation that just dropped on Netflix on June 30th. As always, I'll be doodling a little bit of fan art for the series while we talk about it, so if you're curious about any of the supplies I use, there will be links for everything in the description. But without further ado, let's talk about Nimona. Nimona is a story that Nate Stevenson initially created years ago, but really started developing and posting it online during his college years. Surprisingly enough, it started off as a Tumblr comic, but then Stevenson was approached by a publisher and it was eventually printed in 2015. I believe I found this series sometime in 2017 when I was still teaching art. I was honestly in a really weird transitional phase in my life where I really wasn't clicking with my career and I wasn't drawing for myself at all. It was actually Nimona and the graphic novel Anya's Ghost, which was actually the first graphic novel that I ever reviewed on this channel. Um, but both of these are what got me hooked on graphic novels, so much so that I wanted to talk about them here on YouTube. So honestly, I owe Nimona a lot. I might not even be where I am today if it weren't for me finding this comic. So Thank you, Nate Stevenson, for this incredible story. Let's get into the plot. Nimona seems like a simple enough story at first. Nimona breaks into a stronghold belonging to infamous villain Ballister Blackheart and charms her way into joining him as his official sidekick. But there are a couple things about this duo you might not know. First, Nimona is a shapeshifter and can become pretty much anything except an inanimate object. Very cool and very useful for an up and coming villain. And what about the fearsome villain Blackheart? Well, he might not be so fearsome and he might not be as villainous as Nimona initially thought he would be. She comes to find that Blackheart is actually spending most of his time trying to take down the institution, an organization that has strong control over the residing kingdom and is one of the reasons that Blackheart is perceived as a villain in the first place. He has a strict code of ethics, probably from his early days as a knight, which really clashes with Nimona's destructive and violent behavior. But despite being opposites in how they approach situations, the chemistry with these two characters is undeniable. When reading, you really get a strong father figure vibe from Blackheart, who begins to care for Nimona's well-being immensely the more he gets to know her. Nimona, on the other hand, while initially being quirky, headstrong, and impulsive, starts to show signs of intense anger, a lack of self-care, and would rather avoid tough subjects than talk about them. I won't go into any spoilers here because you really should give this series a read, but there are layers behind every character in this book, especially Nimona. Reading the series, you can get a sense of how it was as a webcomic, but there aren't really any moments where the story feels disjointed like some comics do with weekly upload comics that get printed into volumes. Nimona has been loved a lot since its release and has received an Eisner Award and many other awards, rightfully so. It's a great series that I immensely enjoyed reading. Such a well-loved series is bound to get a film adaptation, right? Well, let's get into that. Oh, this poor movie. Let me tell you, it had such a rough time getting to where it is today. I remember when they announced that the movie was being made and I was so excited and, well, a lot of stuff has happened since then. Remember how I told you that this book was printed all the way back in 2015? Well, way back then, 20th Century Fox bought the rights to turn it into a movie, which means that Blue Sky Studios was going to make it. Very cool. What's not cool is that in 2019, Disney bought Fox, and so poor Nimona was then scheduled and rescheduled to release over and over again. It was scheduled to release in February 2020, and then was pushed to March 2021, then to January 2022, and and why did this keep happening? Well, I think it had to do with acquiring so many properties and figuring out what to do with them all. So what did Disney ultimately do? Even though reports from previous staff at Blue Sky said the movie was 75% complete, Disney decided to scrap the film. Oh, I feel so 
bad for the people who worked on Nimona over the years, and especially to Stevenson, who watched his baby get passed around and gutted so many times. Luckily, last year in 2022, Netflix picked it up, and here we are. Now that the movie is out, how is this adaptation? Let me start by saying that it is very different than the book but not in a bad way. We still have the basic plot, institution bad, Nimona joins Blackheart as a sidekick, they work together, yada yada yada. But the film has made a lot of changes, probably to simplify the plot and make it more consumable for the length of a film. Many of the characters have changed, for example. Golden Loin here goes by his first name Ambrosius and has a short hair look. Blackheart is called Boldheart at the beginning and is mostly referred to by his first name as well, Ballister. But honestly, these are really minor changes and don't break your immersion at all. Golden Loin in the comic is a very status hungry character and is very selfish and does a lot of like, haha, my arch nemesis, all of that is gone in this movie, which I think honestly makes him a lot more sympathizable than he is in the book. Nimona here has pretty much little to no changes except for the fact that they don't show her killing people like she does in the comic. But I have to say, Nimona alone is worth watching this movie. She is an absolute joy to watch. Her expressions, her jokes, her animation, I just, every time she was on screen, which is a lot, I just, oh, it was really, it was a good time. It was a really good time. Besides a couple changes with his looks, Ballister is pretty similar too. He still has a mind for what's right in the world, but he does still at the beginning kind of have a blind faith in the institution that isn't there at all by the time that you meet him in the books. But I would say the biggest changes in the movie is the plot. As I mentioned before, we still have the basic story beats, but the motivations are a little different and the way that we get to the end of the story is vastly different. I won't go into major details because just like the book, you really should watch it for yourself, but the way in which Blackheart loses his arm and the way that Nimona and Blackheart work together clearing his name are very different and at times almost feel like a completely different story. None of this takes away from the enjoyment of the movie in my opinion. In my mind, of course, I was like, oh, this is different from the book, but it's so different that I tried to think of it as its own thing that it's very forgivable because they just feel kind of like they're playing with the same characters, you know what I mean? And then also, if you consider all the things that this movie went through to even be made, it's amazing that it's as good as it was. My husband and I were laughing throughout the entire thing. The graphic novel is incredibly charming and fun, but the movie can be downright hilarious. You can really see all the love that the team put into it, and I'm glad that the project that they spent so much time on got to be seen by everybody in the end. I don't know how true this is, but I also heard that one of the reasons the movie may have been scrapped is that one, there's a scene between two men where one says he loves the other and two, there is a kiss between two men at the end of the film. Some say it could have been another reason why Disney dropped it and to that I say, their loss. I think the Nimona film is going to be loved by a lot of people and shows a dilemma between a couple that is portrayed how any couple conflict would be shown in a film. There's no aggression, confusion, or issues with the characters having feelings towards each other, and nobody bats an eye, which was really refreshing. They just let the characters naturally be and do the plot-related things they need to do. I would give the Nimona film an 8 out of 10 and would absolutely recommend that you check it out. Both the book and movie are fantastic, but if you prefer one medium over the other, they're honestly both great in their own way. Oh, and another interesting note, I also listened to the audiobook version of this as I reread the comic, which was a first for me. I really love the voices for the characters and it was a lot of fun to read along. So if you have a hard time with comics or reading in general, I really recommend it. There were even little bits of audio that were embellished in the audiobook novel, which I thought was really cool. Lastly, let's of course talk about the drawing that we ended up with. For this drawing, I decided that I wanted to make something that shows how well Nimona and Blackheart get along. Like I said earlier, you really get a father-daughter feeling from these two and how well they get along, unless they're arguing about Nimona turning into animals and killing guards, but that's besides the point. Nimona usually tends to carry Blackheart during missions, unless she's something small, so I thought it would be cute if Blackheart was carrying Nimona instead. Or maybe it would be more accurate if she just jumped onto his back. 
Either way, I could imagine Nimona being very difficult to carry because she probably wouldn't sit still. So I drew her throwing her arm up doing the rock on sign and having her feet swing out wildly. It's just a kind of fun and silly moment with the two of them. Behind them is a silhouette of a fire-breathing dragon. If you read the comic, you know, but if you haven't, you should give it a read and find out yourself. I also use Copic and Ohuhu markers for this one. I felt super rusty going back to traditional since I've been doing a lot more digital art lately, but it was so nice to color like this again. All the supplies I use, like pens, markers, sketchbooks, etc., will be in the description, like I said, in case you're curious. And I'm so glad that I finally get to sit down and show you guys this comic. It really is very special to me. I've gifted my original copy to a friend, so I actually went and rebought this book for this video. And I'm glad I did because it also has N.D. Stevenson's new name on it. So it feels more like an official version of the book, you know what I mean? Anyway, that's it for this one. If there are any other graphic novels or movies you want me to talk about, be sure to leave a comment in the description and let me know. As always, videos like this are possible because of my amazing banana members and people like you who like, comment on, and share my videos. I appreciate you all stopping by and I hope that we can draw together again soon. Bye guys.